In this lecture, we are going to talk about navigation events in Angular. So, what are these navigation events? In Angular, when we navigate from one route to another route, there is a sequence of navigation events that is triggered by Angular router. For example, currently I am in the home page of our Angular application. Now, from the home page, when I move to about page, behind the scenes, a sequence of navigation events will be triggered. Now, these navigation events ranges from when the navigation start to when the navigation end. And in between, we have other navigation events. Okay, so every time we navigate from one route to another route, behind the scenes, a sequence of navigation events will be triggered. Now, if you want to see what are the events that has been triggered when you navigate from one route to another route, you can enable tracing for your routes. For example, let's go to VS Code. And here we are defining all our routes. Now, if I scroll down here inside the import array, we are registering those routes using this for root method. Now, after we have registered these routes to this for root method, we can also pass an optional second parameter. And that parameter is going to be an anonymous object. And in that object, we need to specify a property called enable tracing. And we need to set it to true. Now, what this will do is it will log all the navigation events which will be triggered when we navigate from one route to another route into the browser's developer console. Let's see that. So let's save the changes here. Let's go to our application. Currently, I'm in the about page. Let's open developer console here. Okay, so as you can already see, there are some navigation events which has been logged here, but I'll clear the console and I'll show you from start. So currently I'm in the about page. From the about page, when I move to contact page, you will see that there is a sequence of events that has been logged. For example, there is this navigation start event which gets fired when the navigation starts. Then we have this routes recognized event and this event gets fired when the route is recognized. For example, currently the route is root URL slash contact and we have defined this route here. Okay, so here we are defining that route. So when this route will be recognized, this route recognized event will be fired. Then this guards check start event will be fired when the router will start checking what are the guards we are using on the current route. Okay, in the same way, we also have this guards check end when the checking of guards is finished. And in between, we have other events as well. And if I scroll down, the last event should be navigation end event. So you can see we have this navigation end event. And all these events are instance of this router event. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go deep into each of these events and explain them one by one. That is out of the scope of this lecture and also of this course. But these are some events which gets fired when we navigate from one route to another route. Now, as a developer, what we can do is we can subscribe to these events and we can execute some code when one of these events happens. Let's try to understand this with a simple use case. So let me go ahead and let me close this developer console here. Now, currently in our application, when we go to this courses page, for example, if I click on this courses link for the five seconds behind the scenes, the data is getting loaded. So for the five seconds, you will not see the view of the courses page. Only after five seconds, when the data is available, then only you will see the view of the courses page as you would have noticed here. So if I go to home page, and now if I click on this courses link, it will take five seconds to load the data behind the scenes. And after five seconds, when the data is loaded, it will display the view of that route. Now the end user does not know that behind the scenes, Angular is loading data. And the user might end up clicking the link several times thinking that the link is not working, right? To avoid this, what we can do is we can display a loading indicator while the data is loading behind the scenes. And when the data is completely available, we can hide the loading indicator and display the view of the route. And for that, we can make use of navigation events. So here what is happening is when I'm moving from some other route to this courses page, that means when I click on this courses link, a navigation start event will happen. And once the view of this courses page is displayed, the navigation end event will happen. Now what we want is when the navigation start happens, we want to show a loading indicator. 
And once the navigation end event happens, we want to hide the loading indicator. Let's see how we can achieve that. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to write the HTML for displaying the loading indicator. So the first question which will come to your mind is where should we display the loading indicator? We have several components here in our Angular application. So in which component we should be showing the loading indicator? Well, the answer is if we go to this app component, here we are using this router outlet and we have learned that based on the route we have selected this router outlet will be replaced by the view of that route so what we want is by the time the view is not rendered we want to display a loading indicator so we will write the html for that loading indicator here so here let me go ahead and let me add a div on this div i'm going to add a css class and i'm going to call it maybe overlay and inside this div i'm going to add another div and this div is basically going to display the loading indicator so the above div is for overlay and this div is for loading indicator here also let me go ahead and let me add a css class and i'll call it loader okay let me save the changes now i have already written this overlay CSS class and this loader CSS class inside the style.css file. So let me open style.css and here you will see that we have a CSS class called loader and we have a CSS class called overlay. So if I go to the web page, you can see a loading indicator. Now we don't want to display this loading indicator always. Initially, this loading indicator should not be displayed. So let's go to VS Code and let's go to app component.ts file there i'll create a property i'll call it show loader and it is going to be of type boolean and initially i'll set it to false okay and now i'm going to use this property in the html so on this div i'm going to use ng if directive and to that, I'm going to assign that property. So initially, this property is false. In that case, this div will not be rendered in the web page. So if I go to web page, you see that loading indicator is no more there. Okay. Only when the value of this show loader will be true, that time only this div will be displayed in the web page. It will be rendered in the DOM. So now what we want is, let's go to app component.ts file let me close this style.css and let me also close other files here all right let's go to app component.ts and here i'm going to use this ng on init lifecycle hook and inside this ng on init we are going to write some condition based on which router event has happened now in order to work with the router events First of all, we need an instance of router class inside this app component. So here, I'm going to use the inject method to ask Angular to provide us an instance of router class. Okay, and in order to work with this router class, we need to import it from Angular slash router. Okay, and here let's create a property. Let's call it router. It is going to be of type router. Now let's go ahead and let's access this router property. So for that, let's say this dot router and this router instance will have an events property and we want to subscribe to those events. So whenever a router event will happen, we want to subscribe to that event. Now here to this subscribe method, we need to pass a callback function as we already know. And this callback function is going to receive the event object which has occurred so let's simply call it as event or we can also call it as router event so let's say the navigation start event has happened and since we have subscribed to this events property whenever the navigation start event will happen an instance of that navigation start event it will be assigned to this router event parameter so here it is going to be of type event and we need to import this event from angular slash router okay so again this router instance it is 
going to have this events property and this events is nothing but it is an observable as you can see and this observable it is going to emit a data of type event as you can see here and we have subscribed to that observable so whenever a navigation event will happen the instance of that navigation event object will be assigned to this router event now inside this callback function what we are going to do is we are going to write an if statement and there we will check if that instance if it is of type navigation star so here we will say the event instance which we are going to receive for this router event parameter if it is an instance of let's say navigation start okay and in order to use this navigation start we also need to import it from angular slash router so if the navigation start event has happened this router event parameter it will receive an instance of navigation start so we are checking if that instance is an instance of navigation start class in that case we are going to set this show loader to true so here we will say this dot show loader equals true okay so when we are setting this show loader to true in that case the loading indicator will be displayed in the web page now once the view is completely loaded for that route we also want to hide the loading indicator and we know that once the view of a router is completely loaded the navigation end event will happen so when the navigation end event will happen we want to hide the loading indicator now when the navigation load event will happen in that case this router event it will be assigned with an instance of navigation end object so next we are going to check if this router event if it is an instance of navigation end and again in order to use this navigation end class we need to import it from angular slash router so if this router event parameter it is storing an instance of navigation end in that case we want to set this show loader to false so we will say this dot show loader equals false and that's it now let's save the changes let's go to the web page let's go to home page so when we move to home page the navigation start and navigation end event happened so quickly that we were not able to see the loading indicator in the same way if we go to about page the navigation start and end event happened so quickly that we were not able to see the loading indicator in the same way if i go to contact page again the navigation start and navigation independent it happened very quickly but now when we go to the courses page there the navigation start event will happen we can see the loading indicator and after 5 seconds when the data is completely loaded the navigation end event will happen and once the navigation end event has happened now we are not seeing the loading indicator because when the navigation end event has happened this router event it is assigned with an instance of navigation end event in that case we are setting this show loader to false so this div which is showing that loading indicator it has been removed from the dom okay so this is how we can make use of router events here we are making use of navigation start event and navigation end event and these two are router events now if i go to the web page and if we go to the contact page there if i enter something in these forms and now if i try to navigate away since on this contact route we have added can deactivate route guard if i try to move away from this route now without submitting these changes you see it is asking us for this confirmation now if i click on this cancel button here in that case navigation cancel event will happen keep in mind that the navigation start event has already happened in that case the show loader is set to true so it will show a loading indicator now when i click on this cancel button you see it is showing that loading indicator but since the navigation end event has not happened here because the navigation has not ended the navigation has been cancelled so in that case this property this show loader it has not been set to false and that's why we are still seeing this loading indicator so what we also want is when the navigation is cancelled at that time also we want to hide this loading indicator for that here we can write 
another condition so here i'm going to use or operator and there we will say if this router event if it is an instance of navigation cancel event again in order to use the navigation cancel we need to import it from angular slash router so in that case also we want to hide this loading indicator we want to set this show loader to false let's see if the changes and let me actually move this or statement in a separate line so that it will be more readable right Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And now, if I make this form dirty by entering something in these input elements, and I'm not going to submit this form, let me try to navigate away from this contact route. So I'll click on this home link. We are getting this confirmation window. If I click cancel here, the navigation cancel event will happen. And since when the navigation cancel event is happening, we are setting this show loader to false. Now you will notice that no loading indicator is being displayed finally what we also want is let's say while navigating from one route to another route some error has happened in that case also we want to hide the loading indicator so in here i'm also going to check for navigation error event so that is another event which can happen when we navigate from one route to another route so we will check if the router event if it is an instance of navigation error event again in order to use this navigation error you need to import it from angular slash router all right so let's quickly test our application now with all the logic which we have written so far using this router events so if i go to home page the navigation start and end event happened so quickly that we are not able to see the loading indicator same thing will happen for the about link and same thing will happen for the contact link now when i click on this courses link you see it is showing a loading indicator and once the data is available the navigation end event will happen and the loading indicator will be removed and the view of that route will be displayed as you can see similarly in the contact page if i make the form dirty and if i don't submit the form and if i try to navigate away if i click on cancel it is not showing the loading indicator if i click on ok we will be navigated away from that route so from the contact we have been moved to about page so i hope with this example now you understand what is a navigation event in angular and how we can make use of navigation event in our angular application